Hello, so today's video is about the Tamron 28 300mm super zoom for full frame cameras. Now, I didn't ever think that I would be using a super zoom, let alone making a video talking about one. <laughs> I wrote super zooms off maybe, I don't know, 25 years ago or something. It was just a pretty much a bad idea. And, and so I've been carrying an array of different versions of these lenses and more around with me all around the world for the last few decades. And that's probably affected my back quite a lot. Now, I'll show you a few of the pictures maybe later on in the video, and I will probably voice over the video so that you can, so I'll just talk through the pictures. I'll only do a few, so I won't make it too long. Um, just so I can kind of give my thoughts on the pictures and you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Because I'll cut straight to the point. There's no kind of ultimate conclusion of, yes, it's a great lens, or no, it's a real bad one uh, with this lens, because it's a compromise. And everyone's gonna have to make their own mind up about whether it's the right lens for them or not. But what I will do is go is talk about my experience of using it, why it came into my hands, some of the good things, some of the bad things, and try and explain why it's a bit of a compromise. So, you know, I'm not a technical lens person, so I'm not gonna show you charts with distortion or chromatic aberration or any of those things. I'm just gonna talk about it from the perspective of, of what it's like from my point of view as a professional photographer with 30 years experience of shooting with all kinds of different lenses. So, right, back to the beginning. So I, <laughs> I had an assignment the, quite often with lenses like this, I don't go out and buy them because I'm interested in them. I don't go out and buy them to test them. I buy them because I have an assignment that arrives that kind of needs them. And so a few years ago, I had an assignment which was to produce a set of pictures for a construction company. And the challenge was is that the pictures all had to be taken at height and there was scaffolding everywhere and lots of hazards and health and safety issues. And so it, we had to be really, really, really limited on the gear that I was taking. I had to be able to climb with it and not have obstructions or things hanging off of me. And so I needed to cover wide angle to strong telephoto. And so I didn't really have anything else that covered it. So I started looking around. This lens had reasonable reviews. I bought one and used it for the assignment. Since then I've used it. It, it was fine. It did exactly what I needed. I should point out that the, 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 the assignment the pictures were mostly for reference purposes and for social media and so they didn't need to be the image quality wasn't a wasn't a, a serious issue at all they were never going to be used big and so that was the main reason why i thought i could use a compromised lens like this for for an assignment like that and it worked out fine and i was actually quite impressed every everyone was happy with the pictures since then i've used the uh, I decided to keep it and use it as a kind of travel lens, holiday lens, you know, trips out with the family, messing around with friends um, lens, and just in case another assignment of the same type arose. And it's quite interesting, really, because I kind of have always hated the idea of a super zoom. You know, I've always been like, if you want a telephoto, you should use your 70 to 200 f 2.8. And if you want a, stat, a standard, you should use your 50 millimeter. If you want wide angle, use your wide angle lens, all of that kind of thing. Um, which I think a lot of photographers can be still a little bit kind of, you know, kind of caught up with that kind of thing. And I'll jump in straight away and say that this does not replace these. Of course it can't. Look at the size of it, it's tiny, right? They're about 600 quid, 700 quid, I think. Maybe, I think there's a few, there's, they're available for all the different main camera mounts and Sony, Nikon and Canon. I think it ranges from about 500 to 700 quid. Um, so it's not cheap, you know, it's not the cheapest lens in the world, but it's also not the most expensive. And of course it doesn't replace these. You have to understand the nature of what this is. It goes from 28 millimeter to 300, for Christ's sake. I mean, that is an incredible range. It's never gonna be as sharp as, as choosing the right one of these, but it punches its weight. It punches quite close. And with careful use, it can get really quite close. And the versatility that it offers and the lightweight nature of it really does mean that it's really rather powerful to be perfectly honest now the build quality of the lens is fine it's plasticky but that makes it light and who cares if it's plastic i've used this for the last three or four years and it's not mr b it's tough 
It's got weather sealing around the, the lens gasket where it joins onto the camera, so effectively it should be okay in the rain. It zooms the wrong way for Canon users, and that's a huge pain for me because I'm programmed to Canon zoom lenses. <laughs> Others won't be or will use other, you know, have less of an issue with that, but I'm programmed that way. Um, and so I'm constantly kind of grabbing it and zooming the wrong way when I use it. It has a zoom lock hold button just in case, but it never seems to get zoom creep. So I've never actually used that button. And the image stabilization on this is just extraordinary. It's as good as anything else. Simple, maybe even better. You know, it really does kind of stabilize the image and, and allow you to shoot at a much slower shutter speed. Um, I could... I, I couldn't tell you exactly how many stops extra it gives you, but it certainly it certainly works well. Simple, you know. That's for me. Image stabilization either works well or it or it kind of doesn't. Um, and it's quiet. The focus is quiet and quick. The image stabilization is quiet, quieter than the most of the Canon lenses that I've got. And it focuses quickly and accurately, actually, most of the time. The zoom ring is about the right weight, so it enables you to move through and the, and the right sort of throw, you know, so it all kind of fits into your hand quite nicely and works. And look at the size of it. I know I'm going to say that like 10 times in this video, but <laughs> it's tiny. Now, you know, across the, in terms of the sharpness, it's, you always have, this is kind of where this, that the image quality is where this whole thing falls down because the, you have to understand the nature of the lens. It's important to understand that, that it's not, it can never be the ultimate solution for everybody. It's never gonna be as sharp as one of these things, uh, you know, perfectly taken picture. So the image quality, you know, you can kind of end up with um, pictures that are ever so slightly soft and a little bit muzzy around the edges and a bit of diffraction and a bit of flare and a bit of kind of, you know, um, yeah, kind of, I suppose, ugliness to the to the elegance of the picture, as opposed to something that's taken on on here. However, if used with a bit of caution and used maybe at f/8, so not kind of wide open or fully stopped down, but in the sweet spot of sharpness, I think is probably about f/8. And maybe you make sure that you take extra care when you're taking the picture so you've got the fast enough shutter speed. If you're zooming into to sort of 300 mil to make sure that you're not gonna get subject movement or camera movement it, it, um, with the image stabilizer on if or off, whichever way you wish to use it. Just being thoughtful about your settings. Maybe zoom back out from 300 just a little bit because obviously at the very long range of 300 you're going to be testing the optics whereas let's say at 200 millimeter you're not going to be testing the optics quite so much. Uh, at 28 mil you can have this kind of it's a, it's a nice wide angle but it, you, you're never quite sure whether it's fully sharp or not and that can be a bit of the nature of a 28 mil by the by the virtue of what it is but it also I think is a sort of nature of this lens that sometimes you're looking through the images going is that sharp is that sharp i'm not sure if that's sharp or not and as opposed to when i look at a variety of pictures that are taken on l lenses and this sort of mungled together let's say i can pretty much instantly tell what's taken with a kind of big lens however that leads to this issue of do you really need to tell what's your purpose what are you using your photography for and i'll use an example to I'll use two examples. So I'll use me as the first example. So for me, I'm a perfectionist. If I go out with my camera, even if I'm going out to photograph with my, even if I'm going out for a walk with my, with my family, there might be something that I see that instantly turns my photography from a fun family day out where I'm just going to take a few pictures of us having fun to, oh, that might make a saleable image. I might be able to do something with that. I might have a client that might need a picture like that. So let's say, for example, I'm out and it's sunset and there's a really lovely silhouette of some surfers walking through the silhouette, walking through the setting sun. That picture instantly goes from me from being, oh, I'm out with my family having fun to, oh, I know a client that might like that picture and that client may want to use that picture on a billboard. And that's when this lens becomes a problem for me because I start thinking, OK, it looks great, but I know it would be better on my Canon 70 to 200 or 300 or whichever one I would choose. I know that I would get a better file from it. And I found that sort of repeatedly in use that this lens is ever so slightly inconsistent with the sharpness and that kind of, you know, it's kind of, let's say 25% less good than, than these lenses 
And so that's, that's not a lot when you consider what it will do, the versatility of it. But for me as a professional, that's a big issue. And I don't like being disappointed when I come back from a shoot and I've taken a picture that I think should be an absolute stunning shot and then find out that the quality of the lens has let it down just a little bit when I know what I would have been able to have got with these lenses. That's me. So that's why I don't pick it up very often anymore. However, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day who's a keen photographer, she's an amateur photographer, she's really into photography but she's just not interested in all of the nonsense. She's, she's not interested in any post-production whatsoever, she uses her camera to, as a kind of, you know, to capture scenes that she thinks, she thinks that look nice when she's out and about, take pictures of her family and her kids, she's not interested in selling them, she's not interested in printing them out, anything bigger than kind of, you know, that kind of size to go in a photo album, she's not ever going to do anything with them beyond that, that's it, they're memories, she likes making them, she likes taking good pictures, but she's not interested in the processes of of kind of, of getting to better quality pictures. So I said to her, you know, why don't you start shooting raw? And she was like, Roy, why would I do that? I have no need to sit in front of the computer every night looking at my pictures. I'm just not interested. I just want to make them, get them printed and choose the ones I want, get them printed and that's it. That's the last thing that I'll ever do with them. And I said to her, well, you know, your, your quality, would you'd be able to pull your shadows out more, you'd be able to get, you know, blah, 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 more dynamic range. And she was just like, shut up not interested. And she only shoots in, I think, sort of small or medium setting on JPEG. She's only got one memory card. And I said to her, well, you can buy cheaper memory cards now and you can, you know, you could shoot in, in, in RAW. And she's like, well, that's ridiculous. Why would I do that? And I kind of can see her, her point. And this lens for her would be awesome because it would just be such a step up from her, from her kit lens that she's got on her, on her camera at the moment. And it would be great because it would just give her that flexibility of she's not interested in looking at it 200% in Lightroom to see if it's critically sharp or not. And so there you go. That's kind of the end, I suppose, of this review. I think this is an incredible lens. I think it's capable of really quite surprising image quality if used carefully, if ever so slightly inconsistent in general daily use. Um, and therein lies the problem. That means that I know that I could get better quality with carrying all of this stuff around. And so I will continue to carry all of this stuff around apart from when I know that the, there is absolutely very small chance of kind of professional use of the images further down the line. For anybody that is thinking about maybe that this might be the solution for them, I would say, um, really think about whether or not you're a perfectionist photographer. Are you somebody that likes to go into Lightroom and look at your pictures or are you somebody that just accepts them for what they are? If you're somebody that accepts them for what they are then this is the most versatile lens that is capable of, of, of good quality um, that will cover focal lengths and save your back from all of this stuff. And I do wonder whether this is kind of the future-ish of photography coming to us of these kind of super zooms um, that, are, that are kind of optically very good, much better than they were years ago. Um, you know, and I know that Canon made a super zoom that was the, an L super zoom that was a 28 to 300, but good God, it was huge and it's heavy and it was expensive. And so that kind of, for me, always sort of outweighed all of the advantages. But this thing is, have I mentioned that it's light? It's so light, you know, and I reckon if you combine this with a 50 mil, a nifty 50, 50 mil 1.8, so what a combination that would be, just those two little things that practically kind of fit in your pocket and you've got your 50 mil for, if you want kind of, you know, super, you know, pictures in difficult lighting conditions and nice out of focus backgrounds and then you've got your 28 300 to cover everything else. That would be a really great travel uh, setup, you know, and I, I would, if I was gonna do something like, um, walk to walk through the Himalayas which I've done once before um, you know weight is such an issue when you're at altitude um, that that would probably be a great combination for something like that uh, having said that actually it wouldn't I would take this lot <laughs> so there we are with the problem what would you do what would you do if you were going on an adventure to Mount Everest and you were going to be carrying all of your own kit what would you take would you take all of your all everything that you've got or would you take just the bare minimum that you thought you might need? Or would you take a compromise lens like a super zoom? 
yeah, I hate using the word compromise, but actually that's kind of how I feel about it. So here we are. Anyway, this is a wide angle shot, shot at 28 mil and up in the volcano in Tenerife of the cable car. And you can see that that's, um, that's 200%. That's super sharp, eh? If we come out to the corners, you can start to see a little bit of breaking down. And actually, you know what? There's a bit of distortion and a bit of muzziness and a bit of, I don't know what you want to call it in those corners. Um, but that's okay. When you look at it like that, it looks absolutely fine, right? No problem at all. Um, and we'll look for another wide angle shot here, which I think probably exposes the, the flaw in the lens uh, a little bit more that you know shot against the light you can start to see um, you know maybe some kind of image less high quality than you might expect from a picture like that but I think it looks you know when you look at it like that it looks absolutely fine right no problem at all you know what's the issue it's just when you start kind of looking too closely that the problem comes okay so Here's a shot that I took of our dog, and this is a kind of classically difficult picture to take of a dog running towards you, okay? So I took a sequence of shots on the AI servo mode, and this was the sharpest one of the set. And, you know, it's acceptable, right? I don't know if I've put any sharpening on there at all. Let's have a little look of, um... yeah, there's a bit of sharpening on that already and it probably might be able to sharpen that a little bit more but it's kind of it's kind of fine you know when you look at it like that it's like the perfect picture of a dog running and it's just when you um come in a little bit closer that you can start to see kind of the softness but the eye sharp you know i know that i would have got a sharper image with let's say my um 300 millimeter f4 and I know that there would have been more sharp images in the sequence from that lens, let's say, or the 70 to 200 to 8, or my Canon 70 to 300 L zoom. I know that there would have been a better hit rate, but actually, kind of, when you look at it like that, looks cool, right? Um, the next shot that I'm going to show you is this picture, shot out in Lanzarote, I believe. And this is where this kind of lens really shines, when you're out just for a walk and... You know, you see something that's a little bit further away than you would have normally been able to have shot with, let's say, a kit lens or a standard lens. And then you just have this this amazing reach. And it's kind of lovely lighting conditions, ever so slightly uh, challenging because of these highlights on the wave here. But let's just zoom in and have a look. And, you know, I'm not unhappy with that at all. It's kind of... This is shot at about 100 mil, I believe. And that... Um, is kind of the sweet spot in many ways of the lens, sort of not at either end. And this is shot at 300 mil, zoomed in on the surfer. And, you know, could we sharpen that just a little bit more? Let's have a little look. Whoops. Uh, it's already sharpened quite a lot to 88. Um, so, you know, that's probably about as good as we're going to get. Uh, let's have a little look up close again. Um, yeah, I think that's reasonable. Again, it's not as sharp as I would have got with 300 f4, but, you know, I don't know quite how much sharper it actually would have been. Now, here's a picture that is to show the out-of-focus elements, how the, 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 the lens handles bokeh and out-of-focus things. Now, pair, pairing this lens with a full-frame camera, which is full of, for a full-frame camera, it means that you've got you know, you've got a great sensor in modern full frame cameras. The sensors are amazing. The ISO is amazing. The image quality is amazing. The autofocus is amazing. So that all of those things together mean that you've got one hell of a capable package and you can throw the background out of focus because of that nice big sensor. And so by shooting with a kind of reasonable aperture and by being quite creative about what you're doing, you can get bokeh. And I think that looks quite nice. I don't think there's anything bad about that at all. Picture here, which is, um, you know, where is this is shot at 28, as we previously talked about. You can then zoom in really nice. This is at 300 mil into some detail in the distance. And, you know, the sharpness is kind of fine, you know. You look around the image and it, does, it starts to break down around here. But again, it, so on close scrutiny, you can kind of find the flaws. But in um, just taking a picture for the, for the actual 
kind of feel of the picture, no problem at all. Now this is a shot that is interesting, because this is shot at 88 millimeters, and you know, I did some basic post-production to this image, but I can't imagine how I would want that to look. To me, that picture is perfect. I can't imagine how I would want it to be different with any other lens, kind of. So in, in, when, when you get it right with this lens, it can be absolutely bang on and perfect. I'll just show you this picture just to show the kind of, again, the possibility of shooting portraits at this lens is really rather strong, you know? Look at this, it's nice, nice and sharp, nice portrait. And I'll just finish up with this lens, this picture, which I think is a kind of classic example of why this lens I've been calling a compromise is actually really quite powerful because just out for a walk and there's lovely evening light just breaks through across the mountains and you get this paraglider, parachute guy, whatever it is, coming down and the light hits the red and you see that, and normally with most cameras with an iPhone, you haven't got a chance. With most cameras with a kit lens, you haven't got a chance. And yet with um, this 28-300 super zoom, you can zoom straight in there and you get a reasonable picture. And, you know, it might not be the sharpest thing in the world, but holy moly, it's better than nothing, you know? Um, there we are. I hope that's been of some use to you. Um, I'll just show you. I'll finish off with another picture of, of our dog. Look at the look at the beauty of the thing. You see that again is as that loads in, we'll see the sharpness pop. Hopefully, yeah, this is kind of crisp. You know, and you look around the frame, you get to the edge, and oh, you know, you start to get that quite smudging thing coming in again, which you know you just don't want to look too closely. If you look at it at this size, it's absolutely perfect. Um, thank you very much for watching. You know, um, uh, please do subscribe if you like this kind of content. I'm sorry if this video has been a bit disjointed and a bit um, has no clear conclusion, but I think you'll understand <laughs> if you've sat through this. I think you'll understand that this is a very capable lens but with a few limitations. And that's the nature of this lens. It's a super zoom, it's gonna be the nature of the lens. There's no getting away from it, I'm afraid. But you can see from these pictures the, the possibility that is there, and you can also hopefully see some of the flaws. So I hope this has been a kind of reasonably balanced um, review for you. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching, goodbye.